Thanks, Mr. President. Well, uh, despite the public debate and uh, despite our days and days of briefings, and despite this government's genuine wish to rebuild Tasmania's ailing forestry industry, I still have deep reservations about this bill. Uh, it's well known that I supported the Tasmanian Forestry Agreement legislation last year as the culmination of four years of hard negotiation and compromise. The TFA was far from perfect. The process seemed to ignore the interest of private forest growers, for example. But all sides of the forestry debate gave up a lot of ground. And there was hope for an end to the so-called forest wars, which have been ongoing for more than 30 years. ENGOs had been fully involved in the process and were ready to support the industry in international markets and showed that. Now we go back to discord, a fact recognised by the government which is pushing draconian laws against forest protests. Like other members, I received many emails supporting the Tasmanian Forest Agreement. And I'd like to quote one, Mr President, which uh, seems to sum up the whole argument. I think it came in just this morning. And uh, it was interesting, I was just sort of nodding my head in agreement. I'll start. The forestry agreement was negotiated with all the parties concerned and an outcome was reached in the true spirit of understanding and compromise. The real winners of these drawn out negotiations were the people of Tasmania, now and in the future. This is the way democracy and community are supposed to work. Everyone not completely getting what they want but able to listen to the other side and agree to a give and take outcome. As the last bastion able to use common and moral sense in this argument, I implore you not to allow the destruction of the hard work and sensible and ethical outcomes that have come out from these negotiations. The notion of winner takes all in elections needs to be challenged and dismissed. What message does the repeal of this agreement say about good governance? Or would the message say governance is about self-interest and winner takes all, dismissing democracy as a platitude to be used willy-nilly in any self-aggrandisement? There are also many logical and practical economic reasons to keep the agreement, all of which I'm sure you're aware of through your research, but seems to have been lost among the rhetoric instead to be replaced with tough words like tear up mandate and keeping our promise. The notion of keeping one's promise in today's fast-moving, changing landscapes, while becoming aware of new scientific outcomes almost on a daily basis, shows a political immaturity that staggers the imagination. I therefore request that you take these thoughts into serious consideration in this debate and reject the government's proposal to tear up this agreement. Sincerely, Earl Martin of uh, of Mount Stewart. Um, one of the supporters, uh, Mr President, of the TFA uh, that I've heard from, and I'm assuming that that, that email went to uh, all the other members. Uh, but this, doesn't, this government doesn't want any uh, participation by NGOs in establishing a future industry. Although the Forestry Industry Association says it does want them included. I'd just like to run through the membership of the proposed Ministerial Advisory Council. It's made up as follows. Forest Industry Association of Tasmania, but not necessarily in this order. The Tasmanian Sawmillers Association. The Tasmanian Forest Contractors Association. <coughs> the Tasmanian Farmers and Grazers Association. Tasmanian Special Timbers Alliance. Forestry Tasmania. Private Forest Tasmania and the National Centre for Future Forest Industries, UTAS. All well and good, Mr President. As well as the omission of any environmental representatives, there are no community representatives. There are no union representatives. Tasmanian taxpayers who own the state's forest resource are not represented on the Ministerial Advisory Council, Mr President. The owners of Tasmania's forests get no say in the future. And now we're wrestling with this bill, Mr President, against the background of declining native forest industry throughout Australia. And as the Leader said in her second reading speech, quote, 
There is no doubt that the native forest industry is at a critical juncture. After years of decline through attacks from the ENGOs and the Greens, the loss of historic markets and increasing competition from plantation wood, our historic markets have changed. The government recognises that broad-scale wood chipping is not a basis on which the Tasmanian community wishes to build a forest industry. End of quote. But just putting aside the blaming of the ENGOs and the Greens and concentrate on the loss of historic markets, Mr President. The most recent, <laughs> the most recent stats <laughs> show that over the past 10 years, the amount of logs produced from Australian native hardwood forests has collapsed from 10 million cubic metres to only 3.8 million in 2012-2013. At its height, last decade, Tasmania was processing more than 5 million cubic metres of native timber. In 2012-2013, as exports to Japan fell dramatically, less than 800,000 cubic metres was, uh, was processed. An article in the Age newspaper on August the 9th analysed the decline. Quote, the once dominant native forest chip export industry has been hardest hit. Chips, not sawn timber, have sustained the industry for many decades. I can't argue that there is no decline in the native forest industry, says Peter Mitchell, an experienced timber man and general manager of Southeast Fibre Exports, a mill and wood chip exporter on the New South Wales south coast. It is not happening because of green pressure, not because of someone sitting up a tree. It's happening because of the markets. International competition from plantations in Vietnam, Thailand and South America produce cheaper chips with higher yields. And that's an analysis from uh, The Age, Mr President. There's no reason to see that situation changing in the future. Plantations and yields in competing countries are only going to grow. And with the shonky, market-distorting managed investment fund system gone, there's not much planning going on in Tasmania, Mr President. And the leader is right in saying, and quote again, this is the time to explore new opportunities and not close our minds to what the industry may achieve. End of quote. Of course, Mr President, this could happen just as easily and with more support under last year's TFA and with the support of the NGOs for FSC certification and in international markets. But that is going to be trashed. It will require great ingenuity under this proposed legislation to maintain any image of harmony around the Tasmanian forestry industry, whatever shape it takes. Especially if we are to see mandatory sentencing and on-the-spot fines of $10,000 for those who protest. A senior fellow at the Australian National University Spenner School on the Environment and Society, Judith Ajani, believes a big issue hanging over timber is resolving the social conflict between the environmentalists and industry. She's quoted in that Age article, Mr President, the role of governments is critical. Governments own most of the native log resource. She argues that with the growth of plantations and the fundamental market restructure, the forest industry is already enduring, and Australia is more than 80% on the way to a new model. It will fall to policy makers to decide whether the final step is taken. It is the government's role to end the conflict in society, and it now has a practical way to do it. That's my final quote from that Age article, Mr President. Well, I don't see how this bill before us will end the conflict in society. Please correct me if I'm wrong. 